Hello. For the next few minutes, I'd like to talk to you about the division of labor when developing MOOCs at low cost in an institution. Who should do what? Let's ask this question. What tasks can be removed from a subject ma matter expert and carried out more efficiently by others? Okay, so what are the main tasks that we're looking at here? Well, there's instructional design, content development, and we're mostly talking about video. And again, the reason for this is because video, even though it doesn't take a lot of effort to develop, probably needs the most skills to develop. Okay, editing videos and assembly of a course on a platform uh, and quality assurance. Okay, those are the tasks. And we really want to see who needs to do what with those tasks. Okay, instructional design. Well, essentially, subject matter experts need help from an instructional designer on this. It's always interesting to ask, what do you expect from a subject matter expert before they decide to do a MOOC? Well, you obviously need them to have expertise in their subject area. You probably also feel that they must be a fairly natural presenter, pretty good presenter, uh, and those, that would be the type of candidate that would be suitable for developing a MOOC. But they wouldn't necessarily have instructional design expertise, particularly instructional design expertise for MOOCs as opposed to regular teaching. So they would need help in that area. Okay, bear in mind that the idea of teamwork is expensive. We're going to get people to work together. We want to minimize the amount of communication overheads and possibly unnecessary uh, work involved in it because it makes the process expensive. So we would probably take a relatively simple approach to instructional design. We will use fairly simple but effective learning strategies, nothing too sophisticated. We'd probably use templates for documenting or deciding on those strategies. And we'd probably come up with a simple project plan, which will really consist of a, a list of learning objects or items that are to be developed at per before particular points in time. Okay, I'd like to take a bit of time to say something about templates. Templates are a useful tool to take a simple approach to instructional design, as well as a simple approach towards the development of content. Essentially, what we're doing is that we're giving them a form where they've got to fill in the blanks, rather than training them in instructional design and then giving them a blank sheet. In terms of instructional design, basically they will have a set of object types, like whether that be a video, an assignment, a discussion, and so on like that. And with a small amount of training as to the appropriateness of these objects for different types of MOOCs or different types of topics, they'll select the objects that they generally want to use in their MOOC and maybe even more specifically within topics in their MOOC. So the outcome would be a list of learning objects and a project plan. In terms of content, we can use templates in a few different ways. Just say for, we look at videos again, because that's the, the major challenge we'll say. You might use templates, you might use PowerPoint as the basis for these videos, and you might use templates, PowerPoints, give them standard PowerPoints, which would be almost in the style that you would like them to use. They may even be branded and they may be opening slides and finishing slides. So you can automatically generate tops and tails or intros and outros. You can use templates for quizzes. For, for example, you could use a GIFT format, G-I-F-T. This is an openly accepted standard format that makes it easy to write quizzes in a text editor or in a word processor. It can be used to import questions onto a platform or a learning technologist could use them just to copy and paste. You might have a standard format for discussions or assignments, which makes sure that the subject matter expert gives the person assembling the course all the information they need to do, know to upload it onto the course platform. So. The subject matter expert then doesn't need to understand the platform. They just need to fill out these forms, these templates. I'd like to say something on subject matter expert training. 
Again on skills, now we talked about what might be the characteristics of a good subject matter expert for developing a MOOC, uh, where they would know their subject and possibly be a good presenter, but they may need to learn some skills specifically for the MOOC, and we're going to try to minimize the skills they need to learn. They may need to learn some simple instructional design, really with a view to using the templates or tools that are provided for them. Understand the types of things that can be done in MOOCs, what tools are needed to do that, and where they can be appropriately applied. Even though they might be a good natural presenter, there may be some tips and tricks in regards to presentation, like uh, not putting too much writing on a PowerPoint slide. So good simple PowerPoint practices or maybe some good simple presentation practices to improve their presentation skills and make it easy for editing later on. Now, we may want them to do simple recordings and pass them on to somebody else. So they may need to use some basic recording tools with just some very simple functionality so they can quickly recreate, uh, create recordings and pass them on to something else. Now, there's something I would like to say about subject matter expert training is the idea of certification that this training should be oriented towards demonstrating competence that when the training is done they should be able to show examples of them doing the, the work according to the the way it was demonstrated in training so they can be certified this helps with quality assurance because it gives you some confidence that they will be able to produce materials up to a certain standard later now, video editing and assembly, one of the other tasks. Well, certainly specialist skills will be needed for this. They, they will be needed in the video editing platform, video editing tools and for loading onto the platform. And by the way, some of these tools will be needed for other types of content other than video. So it's most likely that this is best done with an e-learning technologist that does quite a bit of this and just doesn't do it every once in a while so they can develop a certain critical mass of skills. Even though we may use somebody who's somewhat specialized, we do want to keep this as simple as possible. We don't want to be doing very professional videos. Don't overcomplicate it because it will just be a time sink and will make it an expensive process. I'd like to say a few words on quality assurance. First of all, avoid increasing the team size and the workload. The less people involved, the less communication overhead, the less workload. So let's build it into the workflow so some quality assurance tasks are carried out by the people who are already involved in the process. Also, let's accept that there's going to be a trade-off with cost and that we may have to take some impact on quality, but that we may be able to get a very good level of quality, say 80% of the quality we want with very little effort, with 20% effort. Thanks for listening and I look forward to speaking to you in the next video.